You see before you me, Gidget. For 15 and a half years, my life was a complete and total ick. But then, on the 23rd of June, two things happened. I fell in love with two things. Jeff, my moon doggy, and surfing. I am happy to report that falling in love was as easy and natural as learning how to surf. From the moment we met, we knew we were meant for each other. Get lost. <laughs> I'll never forget the first time he told me he loved me. Hey, what was your name again? <laughs> you know something? You are kind of cute. <laughs> If you're in doubt about angels being real I can arrange to change any doubts you feel Wait till you see my Gidget You want her for your valentine You're gonna say she's all that you adore But stay away, Gidget has spoken for you I drifted happily through the summer months. Ours is a world of sun and fun and all the wonders of young romance. Until the night I suddenly realized Jeff soon would be going back east to college and I'd be left facing a different world. Well, more about that later. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, there are some people I'd like you to meet. This, loosely speaking, is my family. The handsome, sensible-looking set of tweeds is my father. He's only the best English professor at UCLA and the most terrific father living, mainly because he makes a practice of not working at it. The one over by the window, chewing her fingernails down at the nub, is my sister Anne. Misname your psychosis of the year. Her heart's in the right place. But ever since Mother died, Annie's maternal instinct has been working overtime. And she gets plenty of help from that other character, who happens to be an A1 first-class nut. He's her husband, John, and he's studying to be a psychologist, which is great because if ever anybody needed a head shrinker, it's Sister Annie. <laughs> but you know how it is. The shoemaker's kids go barefoot, and the psychologist's wife stays flaky. <laughs> Dad, it is now five minutes after 11. At late. Well, by all means, you two run along home. That's not what I meant. I mean Gidget. Why isn't she home? What's she doing at this hour? Here. I don't know what she's doing, but I am blitzing your husband. <laughs> no, you're not. Jim. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> Dad, you're being entirely too permissive with Gidget. She's right, Russ. You know, permissiveness is out. Strong discipline is in. OK. How about disciplining yourself to pay me $3.75? <laughs> you see? You see, you wonder where she gets it? From you. You ignore emotional problems and concern yourself only with mundane facts. <laughs> And here's his most mundane. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Gidget, do you realize it is now five minutes after 11? That late? Well, then, by all means, you two run along. <laughs> Dad, will you talk to her? Absolutely. Have fun? Mm, mildly tragic. I have a problem. I've had a couple of my own this evening. I'm getting a sense of deep hostility. Now who's looking only at facts? Good night, everyone. I have to go upstairs and suffer. Oh, what does she mean by that? It probably means that she's had some slight difference of opinion with Jeff, which will no doubt mark her for life. You think not? You think not? I think not. Good night, children. <laughs> use the word advisedly. <laughs> Please not argue. I need your help. I'm utterly destroyed. Don't tell me. You broke up with Jeff. No, just the opposite. I still have his ring. And this destroys you? <laughs> I should have such destruction. I don't understand, LaRue. Of course, it's wonderful having his ring. But suddenly driving home, it hit me that I'm all this younger than he is. 
He found out you're only 15 and a half? Oh, no, I'm still 16 to him. <laughs> the point is, he'll be going back to Princeton next week. And going steady may be fine for him at his age, but it just doesn't seem right that I should sit around for the whole year and die on the vine. <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't be fair to him. I mean, what man, when he gets married, wants to have as a wife some unsophisticated dodo who's never been around and met people or anything? I guess you got a problem. What are you gonna do about it? I'm not sure yet. I've gotta do some heavy thinking. Honey. Just a minute got to hang up. Visit from the parent. Talk to you tomorrow. Hi. They go? Yeah. Boy, they act 180 years old apiece. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing they got married. Saves two other people. A fine way to talk about your sister. Oh, Annie's all right. She means well. But John... Dad, do you really think John will ever make it, being a psychologist? That's what he's studying for. Personally, I think it's a toss-up, whether they'll let him practice or put him away. <laughs> Something go wrong this evening? Any real problems? Nothing I can't mishandle myself. Just normal agony. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Jeff this morning and told him straight out that it would be best for his sake if I continued to date, even if he didn't. He agreed to think it over and call me back. Meanwhile, to pass the time of day, I decided to make some extra entries in my diary. And then, dear diary, I knew I had no choice but to give in. And he kissed me as he's never kissed me before. And I... And I got goose pimples all over. <laughs> Blech. Ain't it dead away? Blech. Sank into nothing. <laughs> Just a sec. Jeff? Hi. Hold it, Sisterville. If you're looking for Dad, he's at the office. No, I was just out shopping and... Well, actually, I stopped by to see you, Gidget. Oh? Okay. Rest the bones. <laughs> Thanks. Um, as John says, when a girl your age stays out until all hours and then comes home with a problem, it has to be some deep-rooted whatchamacallit. And I thought... Well, what I'm really trying to say is, why don't you and I have a little talk, dear? Well, sure. But could we make it some other time? This happens to be an awfully busy year. <laughs> Certainly, we... Dear. <laughs> Of course I understand, Gidge. I, I think you've got an excellent point. The only difference is each of us will date others, for both our sakes. Both date? But that's the most unfair thing I ever heard of. <laughs> you want to date other women? That's all our love, the whole summer, the beach is meant to you? In that case, I never want to see you or the Pacific Ocean again. Only the direst emergency could ever make me go back there. <laughs> Now I've got to have a dire emergency. <laughs> LaRue. John. Oh, John, you were so right about Gidget. If only Daddy had listened to you. Oh, it's terrible. The worst. Well, I warned him. It was obvious that was the way she was heading. 
Listen, darling, meet me at Dad's office right away and we'll tell him. Excellent idea. <laughs> oh, Anne, wait. <laughs> Annie, what happened? The worst. What's all that stuff, for gosh sakes? Protection. How many times do I have to tell you I'm allergic to the sun? <laughs> Please, that's the least of my problems. <laughs> We headed for the beach, and I had plenty of time to mull over my discovery that being honest isn't always the best policy. But if you're honest, all you can do is settle back and live with the trouble it brings. I was telling the room, never, never try to deal honestly with a man. They simply do not know how to cope with it. When a woman like myself comes along and tries to be direct, open, honest, completely unselfish, it throws him for a loop. Once and for all. You're through with him? Then what are we doing at the beach? I'm gonna give him a second chance. <laughs> to think things over. I'll bet he's as upset and overwrought as I am. He doesn't look so overwrought to me. <laughs> That's because you're not in love with him. When you're in love, you see things differently. You sure do. But I still don't see where I figure in all this. Simple. You are a dire emergency. Obviously, I can't just walk up to him and offer him a second chance. Why not? I do it all the time. <laughs> Can I help it if my very best friend insists on coming to the beach and makes me come with her? What can I do? I'm warning you, if I start to blister, the next thing you know, I'll vomit and... You want to just put your stuff on. <sighs> now, the idea is we go sit on the beach near him, but not too close. And then I'll be very big about this whole thing. Give him every opportunity to come up and talk and gradually make up with me. <laughs> Fortunately for him, I'm not the petty type. Yeah, you me, you want to have your cake and eat it, too. Not at all, LaRue. It's pure, unadulterated logic. Sure. <laughs> Here, all we have to do is find a spot where he can't miss seeing us. <laughs> That's not going to be a problem. <laughs> come on, let's catch him off his guard. Surprise him. You in there? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Sounds. I am sure that Gidget will have a perfectly logical explanation. Maybe to you, but not At any to... rate, when Gidget comes in, I will do the talking. All right, we're only trying to help. I know that. You want some potato chips? No, thank you. Another sign we should have looked for. That would have warned us. What? Overeating. Sure sign of sexual starvation. <laughs> Take back, Russ. Was Gidget overeating a lot? Not as much as you. <laughs> I don't. Boy, it was sure hot in that outfit, I'll tell you. Well, I gave him his chance and he blew it. He ignored it. Me, I can understand. But you, in that outfit, and that's what I call first-class ignoring. <laughs> Not that I care a whit. But that's the kind of girl he likes, and I say welcome to it. She yeah, acted like he was welcome. <laughs> yeah, me too, or I'll be late for dinner. The way I feel. I may never eat again. <laughs> See you tomorrow morning. Personally, I think it's a waste of time, the way that girl is built. That piece of cornbread? I'm gonna worry about that? <laughs> well? 
I'm gonna worry about that. <laughs> Now, for the last time, I want to know, where did you get this information about Gidget? Well, I'm certainly not going to tell you if you're going to make such a big thing out of such it. Such a big... You'll probably magnify it all out of proportion. Very good point, Anne. Magnify what? Watch now. All I have to say is that I read it in your diary in the... Read it in her diary? diary. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> all right, Daddy, have it your way. She's your problem. But I just want to remind you, she's the one who sank into nothingness. And that's a quote. From the Bible. And, John, do me a favor. Go home. <laughs> but, but, Daddy, Go we... home. Give me a chance to convince myself that you meant well. Of course I meant well. I mean, she's my baby sister. I don't suppose there's anything I can say. John, for the first time, you and I are in complete agreement. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> I kidding? I was worrying about his plenty. I was telling myself to face facts. I was not Sophia Loren. <laughs> Good grief, even she would have had to think twice about cornbread. <laughs> yeah? Me, Francis. Come in. What's with you? You look worried. Can I help? That's just what I came upstairs to ask you. Have you a real problem? You mean you know? Well, how did What's you What's the difference how I knew? A lot of difference. Brother, things aren't tough enough, I guess. You, you of all people have to find out what an idiot I am. <laughs> well, everyone makes mistakes, honey. Yeah, but you have to have a real talent to make the kind I make. Now Jeff has me exactly where he wants me. And when I think it was my idea... Your idea? <laughs> I don't think Jeff would suggest it. When it comes to things like that, he's not square, he's cute. <laughs> you're looking at me funny. I am trying to understand. Yeah, but you're trying to understand like it was the end of the world or something. Daddy, I think you better let me work this out for myself. You're only going to make a great big thing out of nothing. Francis. Francis? I do not consider sinking into nothingness nothing. Now, there's a very serious question of morals involved. Sinking into... Morals? Yes. Now, you and I had an understanding that any time we had a problem, we... You're looking at me funny. Well, I'm trying to understand. Yeah, but you're trying to understand as though I had done something immoral. Well, I think reading someone else's diary is just about as immoral as you can get. Now, just a minute, Gidget. Oh, Daddy, how could you? How could you do something like that to... Yeah. <laughs> I knew Dad had to be feeling every bit as rotten as I. But what could I do about it? Sure, I could go to him and say, I don't mind you reading my diary. But that would be a lie. Just like if he came to me and said he didn't mind my... sinking into nothingness. Because that would be a lie. At least I hope it would be a lie. I'd hate to think he wouldn't mind if I ever did anything as jerky as that.
Hi. I couldn't sleep either. Don't cry anymore. I'm not. Honest. I haven't got any more tears left. into nothingness. And then Friday, I start living a life of regret. You're writing your diary in advance? No, I'm not that overconfident. It's just, well, when things get dull, I, I make up a little. In this case, I was making up a romantic kiss. Oh, good. So if you didn't read the diary, then who didn't told you about it? Our own personal tell star, Annie, right? I'm not talking. Oh, boy. I know Annie means well, and I love her and all that, but I do wish she'd stop trying to be my mother. Well, I guess she thinks you need one. But I don't. I have you. You do in me. tomorrow and I know I'll just shrivel up and die out of loneliness. But at least we got one thing settled. Huh? Well, but I should date and he'll think it over. I never heard of a wiser solution. And I think you and I rattled Annie and John pretty good. Yeah, I'd say they were fairly short. Poor old Annie who. She wastes all that maternal instinct on me when she ought to be having a baby of her own. Of course, that could be John's fault. You know psychologists had the most peculiar ideas on sex. They think it makes you nervous, makes you overeat. When actually anybody with an ounce of intelligence knows all it's good for is making me... <laughs> <laughs> good night, Annie. Funny thing about life. A few hours ago, I hit the lowest point of my whole absolute existence. Now I'm riding so high I can't even see cloud nine when I look down. John would say that shows a lack of maturity. And I can't argue with him. When you're young, it's not easy to level off and fly right. It's too bad you can't be born with maturity and then lose it later on when you're old enough not to need it anymore. I wonder if thinking about stuff like that means I'm a philosopher. Oh, I hope not. Because I'm too tired for all that, Jim. <laughs> 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 